You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with the members, uh, three members of the band Cosm from Vancouver. They play a dark style of progressive music, progressive metal, if I can talk properly, is inspired by Bloodborne, the video game, as well as Lovecraftian, esoteric, dark, dark themes. So please, please welcome to the pit, everybody. Cosm. Hello. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having us. Of course. I'm glad that you guys took time to talk to me and in, in the middle of the world being turned upside down. It's great <laughs> to be able to reach out to artists such as yourself, see what you're keeping up. Cause I know you guys have been keeping busy since everything's kind of went on lockdown and uh, you haven't put out anything yet. So I thought I'd jump on it and kind of catch, catch you guys before you put out something new. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. We've been, we've been busy. Very, very busy. <laughs> yeah. Definitely like um, a lot of songwriting. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know when we're actually going to have new material out. It may still be a little while, but we've definitely been like doubling down in our songwriting for this this whole pandemic. And maybe we should just go around one more time so everyone can kind of match your voices to who you are. So just say, "This is so and so from Cosm. I play blah blah blah." I'll I'll, I'll do it. I'll jump on that. <laughs> uh, this is Eric from Cosm. I play guitar. This is Sterling from Cosm. I play drums. This is Jesse from Cosm, and I'm the vocalist. So to give some people a little bit more background on this band, I was trying to go, go through it quickly. So Eric, you and Mike were in a project beforehand, right? Uh, it's true. We were. I think we've actually been in like, man, we've been in like many projects, maybe like <laughs> maybe like five to date or something like that. We, we go back a long way. And so you had kind of some leftover material from that that you were kind of working on when this started to form? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, we had, uh, we had an old band, uh, called slow wave saga. I know, I think there might be some remnants of that band left online somewhere, but I found some uh, online. Oh boy. <laughs> don't, don't bring it up. <laughs> uh, that, that band kind of like imploded and, um, I felt like it imploded right when we were starting to, um, become most experimental musically. And like, we wanted to continue that on. So we just decided to, start a new band from scratch and we got jesse on vocals and we found sterling uh and we found pastrami on uh, that's our bass player by the way uh on craigslist and uh and and that's how cosm started yeah it seemed to all kind of come together like jesse you yourself had a previous project and and sterling you were looking for a band so it was kind of like oh yeah. let's just put this all together and then pastrami later on yeah, it uh, it kind of happened where we the three three of us are like all of us we had our own sort of progressive esque type projects that all kind of fell on its face, and then I messaged Jesse. I'm like, hey, you sing good. Do you want to start a band? And then she kind of had the, like this delayed light bulb moment. She's like, wait, counter offer. Why don't you drum for my band? <laughs> It was literally like a buffering moment. Like he asked me and I was like, oh yeah, like that'd be really fun. And then it was like dial up music, like the dial up tone going off in my head. And all of a sudden it was like, it was like, oh, uh, drummer needs band, band needs drummer. Do you want to be your drummer? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. And it was just through our mutual, one of our, our mutual friends, um, Chris, uh, he's a, cause he, he kind of like got out of metal and went more towards like, r like rock and funk kind of stuff. And, and they were looking for someone who could actually keep up with Chris cause he was always consistently crazy. So yeah, I seem to fit the bill somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris was the, the drummer of both of our previous bands. Yeah. So he basically left and then he, uh, he vetted for Sterling and that's how we all met. Well, shout out to Chris. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, Lovecraftian kind of universe, were you already in, like inspired writing in that way before Cosm began? Um, sort of. Like I really got into like Lovecraft's fiction. I started reading a lot of his short stories. Um, I played like the, um, I guess like the RPG game uh what is it called call of cthulhu with some oh, friends yeah, yeah. it's kind of like dungeons and dragons but in like the lovecraft universe uh, i started playing so that cool. and I, yeah and i got like really really invested in the lore and then like i just like really wanted to write some stuff based around that that whole mythos and that turned into our first album i guess so any of this uh material like i just need to go back again uh when you and uh you and Mike started jamming on some of the ideas that you had left over. Did any of that material actually end up on the album Cosmonaut? 
Oh yeah, I think. Uh, all of it. Well, I don't know about all of it. Like we we definitely wrote like a bunch of new stuff as a band, um, but there was a lot of stuff that was like fully from the previous band. Like, um, like what? Like uh, the Colossus. song? Col- yeah, the song Colossus was like fully a Slow Wave Saga song. Um, we like we massaged it and changed it a little bit, but it's basically a holdover from the previous band. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh, and and like uh, even on our newest DP, yeah, um, eyes eyes on the inside. Uh, at least two of those songs are basically like reworked songs from our previous project. Yeah, it's more or less when we run out of ideas, we just steal Eric and Mike's old ideas. Yeah, yeah, they just farm <laughs> us for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, cosmic horror. This is a a new thing to me. I'd never really heard of this term, but now I'm I'm getting into it and. It just seems so cool. At the same time, it's like you've given yourself sort of like a setting or a universe yeah. to be creative in, but it doesn't necessarily limit you or box it box you in creatively either. Mm-hmm. No, I think like the, what I've always liked about the concept of cosmic horror is I, I feel like you can do a lot with it. Like it's it's kind of based on like a fear of the unknown. So like that's kind of like part of the idea is like not not knowing, not having a full picture. So you can kind of like insert whatever you want into it which is a very a lovecraft kind of approach like yeah, if you read yeah. the call of cthulhu you never actually come face to face with the monster you just hear about it right yeah yeah for sure that's what so, i liked about a lot of his stories is you know it kind of um just forces you to use your own imagination right so i'm, I'm assuming you're kind of a bookworm yeah i'd say so yeah. i don't yeah. read as much as i'd like to but <laughs> yeah i'd say so <laughs> and how about for the rest of the members of the band? Are you guys uh, readers or are you, what What are you guys into? Because I know eventually you made a, an album kind of based off of this video game, Bloodborne. So we're going to get to that. But like, w- w- are you guys all kind of into reading books or? Um, I, yeah, I'd say like I'm more I'm more of like the the anime and manga person. And I I like I suck with reading books. So I usually will listen to audiobooks instead. Um, usually just when I'm like drawing or just kind of killing time, I'll put on an audiobook or a podcast. And that's usually how I read books. Uh I uh, don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> what is a book? <laughs> what? What, do, what constitutes as a book? What um, is book? Um, I'm very much the no, same. I'm, I'm the same way. Like I don't. I'm. I've, I'm this always been the same way. I just kind of read, you know, this and that and everything. To actually pick up a book is like a big thing for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really, really enjoy graphic novels, like, um, like Hell, Hellblazer and um, uh, Wanted and stuff like that. That was like. I've always really, really enjoyed like graphic novels and then like Sterling manga. I'm actually just starting to become a weeb. It's oh yeah, she's gone hard into the weeb. <laughs> I was like, I was the solo weeb for the longest time. Everyone made fun of me, and all of a sudden now Jesse's into it, so it's okay. <laughs> um, Jesse made it cool. Yeah, I made it yeah. cool. But yeah, yeah basically that's kind of like how I what I read, and I also write a lot. Um, like I, I write prose as well as lyrics, so. That's kind of how I get my, like, I don't know, imagination churning. Well, and you also do the artwork. Yeah, I do. I forgot so- about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, I mean, this is such a visionary kind of a universe. So the, the lyrics and it are very visual. Yeah, actually on Cosmonaut, Eric wrote almost all of the lyrics because they were all from, like, what you guys were writing in slow wave saga before i wrote some lyrics like monarch i think mostly are mine um you wrote more than you give yourself credit for you did write a bunch i mean yeah i guess but i don't know um like this was most like cosmonaut was pretty much i feel like yours and mike's baby like it was very much like from it was your brainchild and then we'll get into eyes on the inside but i feel like that was more of like a collaborative effort um but cosmonaut was very much like Eric and Mike had this idea for a concept and an actual album and we just kind of like wrote around it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, you kind of set the Eric sort of set the base for like all of the visual writing and stuff like that. Right. And so with that last album, Cosmonaut being a concept and now on, eyes on the inside, uh, I kind of wanted to get more into that, the concept before. Does, does it 
does the story kind of go into the next album or eyes on the inside is it connected to cosmonaut or are these kind of mutually exclusive things they're they're definitely separate things um like i mean cosmonaut is kind of like a, a a concept album like loosely based around like the lovecraftian mythos and then bloodborne was kind of a separate writing project where we just we wanted to write something around the video game bloodborne um like after after we finished cosmonaut um a lot of people were asking us why we didn't have anything themed around bloodborne because our name cosm is from bloodborne so we were kind of like well why don't we just write uh like a quick five songs in like six months and try <laughs> yeah, to release was... an ep based around that yeah that was an experience yeah <laughs> but i guess yeah to answer your question they're, they're pretty separate um although like i guess thematically they're kind of linked like they're both mm-hmm. kind of cosmic horror i guess we're glad to have you back, Sterling. <laughs> yeah, we lost you there for a sec. Yeah, so you know what happened? Um, yeah, so my cat, she loves... Remember these cat issues we have? So she decided to lean on my computer, and she literally put her paw <laughs> on the power button on my, my desktop. And so I, I was able to hit cancel right before it fully shut down, and I yelled at her and chucked her out of the room. And she's like, "Why? what did I do? And I'm like, you, you did a lot. <laughs> Before we move on from Cosmo, now, I just wanted to make a little observation because I, I, I do take time to kind of take a look at lyrics. And when I was looking through Cosmo, now, it seemed like on certain songs, it talks a lot from the perspective of we. You would say, we do this, we are this, we do that. And then certain songs were more like, I, I do this, hmm. I did this happen to me. And I don't know, is this is anything that you noticed or is that just me noticing something? I I have a feeling that the I's lyrics were written by Eric and the we's were written by me. <laughs> you know what? I actually was going to say the exact opposite oh, really? of that. I thought I wrote the we lyrics and I thought you wrote the oh. I lyrics. Because, <laughs> because you, well, you write from like a very personal perspective and I just kind of, I like latch onto a concept and write around the concept, but you're like a lot more, you're a lot more personal. I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I don't I didn't notice that until that was just mentioned, to be honest. I think we're going to have to like go back through the lyrics. Now and that out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I liked it. I, uh, either way, it got me into it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So now moving on to Eyes on the Inside. This is an album that's kind of based around Bloodborne. And I don't know a whole lot about this video game. I was kind of researching it. I've always been into Elder Scrolls. And I always thought it would, I, I dreamt about making okay. music based around Morrowind. So oh, the fact cool. that you guys kind of did this, to me, it's not gimmicky. This is like huge, like you, you open yourselves up to just, I don't know, like it's, you, do you get what I'm trying to say is like, you didn't box yourself in. It's like yeah, I said yeah. earlier. Thanks. <clears throat> Yeah, well, like, even a funny story how that was made. Like, the one day, um, just because of the name Cosm, uh, we woke up to our inbox being flooded with people from this really? uh, this Bloodborne group. They were all trying to troll us. Yeah, they were all just like, you know, grant us eyes, grant us eyes, like all these, like, sort of Bloodborne memes and stuff. And we were just getting spammed for it with from them for, like, a solid 10 hours. And I was like... Hey guys, why don't we capitalize on this? <laughs> That's true. I think yeah, that is how we started that, that EP, is isn't of, it? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh after that we like went into the group and it, like we actually managed to get a lot of like fans we pilfered from that group like crazy because it became a meme to go mess with us and then we took over that group and there was like 30,000 people. I think we got banned though, didn't we? <laughs> no, we didn't get banned. No. No, we didn't. You got yeah, banned. We did. It I was did great. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think it surprises how many people are actually into that thing. So I, I shared one of your guys' song on uh, subreddit uh, called Prog Metal on Reddit, and mm. I put posted your song Yarnam. And, and the first comment brought back with Bloodborne inspired metal. How have I not heard of this? And I was mm-hmm. like, I'd never even heard of Bloodborne. This is like, well, who are these? What? What is this? So I live under a rock compared to that, but I just got inspired <laughs> by the music. But people just Im- can immediately latch onto that because it's like you found something that you think is cool, that they think is cool. Mm-hmm. Like, why not just go forward? <laughs> yeah, it's the cool way to connect with people. Like, um, I, I think like I got to give credit to Sterling for, for coming up with the idea of doing a, a Bloodborne themed EP. I think that really helped us to connect with people who like otherwise would never have discovered our music yeah you know we're just some prog metal band but if you know maybe they're kind of into prog metal and they see the little tag bloodborne inspired metal they'll check it out and you know now we have a new fan Mm -hmm. yeah because i remember even um 
it's always that it's the, like that's that video game thing because i remember seeing power oh, yeah. glove once and i had no idea who power glove was and then these guys like come on stage with like koopa shell spalders and stuff and they're all looking like heavy guar mario metal and they're like you guys want to hear some tetris and I'm like <laughs> what <laughs> so instantly love fell in love with them after that so yeah the the video game thing is a great way to connect with people otherwise who don't are, are not into those things yeah. normally all right so uh we got to look forward now past eyes on the inside you guys have been working on stuff have you guys found it hard to be creative um no <laughs> I <laughs> No, I actually like I, I've Not I've heard all. a lot of bands are struggling during this this time, and I totally like understand that. But I would say we we've really had like an explosion of creativity over like the past year. Um, we've been writing a ton. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a lot more to go, but we're fairly deep into recording our next album. So, um, you know, I mean, obviously this pandemic has been really hard on everybody, but you know, in in a way, it's been kind of good for us i mean it's, it's forced us to just mm -hmm. focus entirely on you know being creative musically like we haven't been distracted by playing shows or you know doing anything else in our lives really yeah because that was uh, always the the biggest struggle with writing our own material because we uh we it is fairly complicated it's not uh it, it's not easy to put together and there's always those, you know, outside things you need to do. You know, we, we were getting gigs around um, festival, metal festivals around Canada. We were getting local, sh like local gig offers or local gig offers. And then there's also the aspect of going mm -hmm. out there and supporting your friends and mutual bands and whatnot and being a part of that scene. Um, it's really important. And when you have all that going on, it's hard to spend time writing when you're trying to keep your edge mm -hmm. sharp for the next show. So that tunnel vision has kind of helped you guys. I'd say so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's um, awesome. I still, I still think that, you know, like there's a long way to go before we release something new, but um, like, yeah, this has caused us to focus in and I, I'm really excited for the next batch of material that we're going to release. And uh, I, I need to try to pry as much information out of you as I can. <laughs> and I know that you'd probably don't want to offer up too much because you do want people to kind of be excited for it. Uh, but is it going to be a concept? No, thank the Lord. <laughs> I think I think we want Je okay, Jesse is really burned out from from concept albums. Um, I think we for this album we're wanting to go in a kind of different direction. Um, like I think if I can speak for you, Jesse, mm. <laughs> I think Jesse's been feeling kind of hemmed in <laughs> by the concept stuff. I don't mm. know if you want to. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that. Um, so the band that I was in before had like kind of a concept the theme going and then i joined cosm and then cosm wanted to do a concept and then we did another concept ep after that and the way that i like to write is from like it's more social commentary and more personal experience so like i don't know like drug addiction or like trauma or like just like storytelling in a different sense um, so it's been a little bit, it, I mean, I've obviously like, I really enjoy writing lyrics for concept albums. It gives you something to kind of like focus on, but I also really miss being able to just write about whatever the hell I want and like turn it into something else rather than just having to stick to like, okay, I have to think about like cosmic horror or I have to think about like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, the stars in space and the galaxy and the <laughs> Um, and now I can just write about whatever I want, which is really, really nice. And I'm excited because all of the lyrics are going to be mine on this album, upcoming album, um, which I also have never had the pleasure of having to or being able to do because, again, my previous band um, was like, I think, a little bit too collaborative in that sense <laughs> where everyone's like fingers were in everybody else's like spot, if that makes sense. So yeah. I'm super, super, super excited to be able to have some like mm -hmm. more creative liberties uh, moving into this next album. And it's also just going to be more collaborative, like all like all around, which I'm really excited about. I, I've also noticed that like mm. the vocals always seem to turn out best when we just let Jessie do whatever she wants. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, so we I just agree. wanted to give Jessie the most free reign on this album coming up. So we're we're really excited about it. Oh no! I was just gonna ask Jesse. Um, what about an Inuyasha concept album? 
<laughs> Sterling, we're going to have a talk about this after the interview's over. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, no, just further elaborating on that whole, um, everyone's fleshing the, like their ideas out in a different way. Um, cause yeah, even just, I know with myself, um, everyone's kind of known me, uh, just to be like a complete madman on the drum kit and whatnot. And I, I, I'd kind of, even in my own ideas and in this one, I, I wanted to switch from more so instead of being like overtly really crazy to being really subtle, subtly a lot more difficult um and retain a lot more i guess musicality in the playing versus that balls out you know prog style where it's just like look what i can do kind of thing so um it's made the band happier oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this i think this album is overall like working out like more collaborative like i feel like there's better dialogue between the various members of the band in yeah. the writing on this album um i think like this album's gonna be like it's going to be real proggy, but I feel like we're focusing more on like the song, the songs as a whole, rather than our individual yeah. parts. If that makes I sense. Agree. It's definitely more proggy, but also heavier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad to hear that you said you weren't going to do a concept this time around. Cause like, I think that'll allow you to go into each song as its own concept deeper, yeah. and, you know, instead of be trying to think, well, how am I supposed to tie this concept to the, the giant, octopus in the other song you know whatever it might be I, exactly. all those sorts of things is kind of puts i keep coming back and saying putting you in a box like yeah it's like i don't anyway well moving on like to the we, last i think yeah? we don't want to we want to make sure that we don't get like i don't know pigeonholed as the band that only does concept albums like i think yeah. like obviously we're really happy with our concept albums and you know we may do that in the future but i think we just want to change it up with this next album a little bit mm -hmm. definitely so uh <clears throat> This, I don't know how that, I, I need to wrap this up, but uh, I, I wanted to ask this before I let you guys go as well. Cause Lovecraft, Lovecraft is not gothic to me. I could, uh, some people really relate those two things, but it's esoteric things are not gothic in my mind. And I was just wondering what you guys is, if you have any actual interest in magic or esoteric things. I know Sterling are a huge fan of Danny Carey and Danny yeah. Carey read on his website. He has a page for books and he has like Aleister Crowley books and everything like that. So do you guys yeah. ever just check out any stuff like that? Um, I, yeah, I like, I need to do more of it, but I have a bunch of tarot decks. I, one of my tattoo on my, my only tattoo is a, uh, one of the cards from Aleister Crowley's deck actually. Um, and then, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more of the, the tarot law of attraction stuff is where I kind of go into that without being too crazy about it. Right. It's easy to go off the deep end. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, yeah. No, you can go from zero to 100 and everyone goes, that's cool, to you're insane very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, you know, my interest in that stuff it is maybe more aesthetic. I think it's rad as hell, but I don't know if I have like a real personal interest in it. It's more Sterling's thing, I guess. Yeah. That's totally understandable. It's a it's a bizarre world. <laughs> and mm -hmm. a lot of it is all just gibberish to us because we haven't been <laughs> initiated or whatever, right? So mm -hmm. is there anything else that you guys like to say to our listeners? Uh, actually, yeah, for any any of the musician listeners out there, um, you don't need to go to music school to be a successful musician. Don't give schools like 30 grand to just give you a piece of paper. You can do it yourself. Absolutely. And I mean, that's also, I, I often ask people just, you know, any advice that you'd want to give to someone that's trying to pursue their dreams? Um, that one straight up, just do anyone who says you need a backup plan, there is no backup plan. You need to go at it a hundred percent if you want to make something happen. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I, agree. I think yeah. any, also another thing is like, you will never know what happens if you don't start it. So even mm -hmm. if it's just like taking it one day at a time, if you if you're by yourself, like learning to program drums, learning to record on your own, even if it's just through like a shitty like headphone mic, like that's fine. You, everybody kind of starts from somewhere and you could make a cool like, I don't know, bedroom black belt project out of it. It'd be fine. Um, <laughs> But, <laughs> but just, wow, segue. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, <laughs> but yeah, just, just like take it one day at a time. You can't really, um, yeah. Like, like don't, don't let like 
be don't let the hugeness of a new idea or yeah. new project intimidate mm-hmm. you just break things down into manageable steps you know like you said take it one day at a time one step at a time mm-hmm. yeah make realistic goals for yourself yeah. and then just shoot for those small goals and because if you look at a big idea it's going to stress you out and you're going to drop it we- especially as we get older we're more intimidated yes <laughs> yes great advice guys that was that all made sense <laughs> well said hey. thank you uh yeah so uh that's that's it i mean i i'm really glad that you all took time to talk to me uh, say hi to mike and uh pastrami and uh, hope that they're doing well and i'm really excited to hear what new stuff you guys are working on it's, just keep it under wraps now do your thing take your time <laughs> get it right and uh we'll all enjoy the wine when it's ready <laughs> we can't wait to get it out yeah You've all been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been talking to Jesse, Eric, and Sterling from the band Cosm. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, you guys, and take care of yourselves. Yeah, thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Take care.